Joiner in motion. Second and ten. It's Chandler! Did he catch it? Yes! Oh, my! It was the greatest offense the modern NFL had ever seen. Led by a revolutionary coach and a maestro at quarterback, the San Diego Chargers took the league by storm on a four-year journey sandwiched between two all-time dynasties. When it comes to production, simply unmatched. From 1979 to 1982, San Diego secured three AFC West championships, led the league in passing yards, passing touchdowns, points per game, and rushing touchdowns. Yet year after year, these superchargers would ultimately come up short of football's greatest prize. This is do or die for the Chargers. Fourth and 20, the ball at the 40. Fouts. Throws to the near side. It is Joyner. He's got a first down. Wood, three for three on the day of the snap. The ball is down. The kick is up. It is good. And look at this Charger team. This was the year. Of all Don Coriel's Charger teams, the 1979 squad was best equipped to win a Super Bowl. Led by first-team All-Pros Dan Fouts and John Jefferson, Joe Gibbs' San Diego offense finished second in scoring that year. Yes, that Joe Gibbs. More importantly, their second-ranked scoring defense was the best ever in the Fouts-Coriel era. Third and eight. They've made a real believer out of me today. They've taken on the Steelers, and they gave them all they could handle all of them down the street. Both eventual Super Bowl teams had their you-know-whats handed to them by the Chargers that year. Also interesting to note that by 1979, only Joe Namath had ever thrown for more than 4,000 yards in a single season. Sitting 155 yards shy of Namath's record entering the final game, Fouts delivered with the AFC West on the line. Back to throw. The Chargers ended a 13-year playoff drought and would host the Houston Oilers in the divisional round, minus MVP Earl Campbell and starting quarterback Dan Pastorini. What should have been a walk in the park turned into a nightmare for San Diego. And bouts to the air. Good protection. Throwing deep for Jefferson. Intercepted. Vernon Perry. Blocked. And Perry could go all the way, only Fuller to beat. Fouts looking at third and nine. Down the middle for Joyner, intercepted. Vernon Perry, Houston lead 17-14. Intercepted by the omnipresent Vernon Perry. Eight, seven, six, five. It is intercepted by Vernon Perry. Four interceptions, and the Houston Oilers have pulled off a remarkable upset in San Diego. New season, same core group for Coriel. So how would the Chargers rebound in 1980? He's going for Jefferson. He's got it to the one yard line. Touchdown, he wants a touch. Lester Hayes didn't touch him. Jefferson rolls in for the victory. Jefferson once again made all pro in 80, as did the always reliable Charlie Joyner. There was something different about this offense though. A 6'5", 250 pound force who posted the single greatest season by a tight end ever. Fouts will throw, lobs it out there to Winslow, touchdown. He'll throw, Winslow, there he is, and it is a touchdown to Winslow. Great catch by the young tight end, his second touchdown of the game. Boy, he's something. In 1980, second year phenom Kellen Winslow set single season records for both catches and receiving yards by a tight end. He also joined Jefferson and Joyner as the first trio in NFL history to each go over 1,000 receiving yards on the same team. While Cleveland's Brian Sipe won MVP that season, Fouts shattered his own record with more than 4,700 passing yards. Unheard of in that era. And like the year before, San Diego logged wins against both eventual Super Bowl teams, the Raiders and the Eagles. In the divisional round, San Diego's bearded leader rallied the Bulls from a 14-3 deficit, sneaking past Buffalo in their first playoff win since 1963. All the points second half scored by San Diego. Run! Touchdown! 
But the ride came to an end the following week when the Chargers again failed to take advantage of home field. Needing a stop in the game's final moments, the San Diego defense came up empty. 152 left. Plunkett's going to run it for a first down. He got the first down and fell at the 24. And I think that might write the end of the Chargers story. A wonderful story it has been during this past season. A group of fresh faces aimed to reset the Chargers playoff woes and get them to the top of the mountain in 1981. Running back Chuck Muncie began his first full season as San Diego's lead back. And he also tied a single season record with 19 rushing touchdowns. Rookie James Brooks did it all, running, catching, and returning to the tune of over 2,000 all-purpose yards. And while the front office did trade away Jefferson, his replacement wasn't half bad. Oh, back to throw. Throws it in the end zone to Sandler. He's got a touchdown, San Diego. The Chargers went 10 and six, scoring a hair under 30 points per game in 1981. Fouts again set a new passing yards mark, breaking his own record for the second straight season. Oh, and that Winslow guy? He did something pretty special against the Raiders. Back to throw on third down as Fouts goes into the end zone. Touchdown, Kellen Winslow. He's gonna throw for it this time into the end zone. Winslow, touchdown, Chargers. Looking in the end zone for Winslow. Touchdown, yes. But the story of the 81 Chargers can be told in two infamous playoff games, totally opposite of one another the Epic in Miami, and the Freezer Bowl. Tom Morris, rookie putter from Ohio State, hits the ball downfield. Up back takes it, not too deep. This is Wes Chandler, and he is all trouble in an open field, and Wes Chandler could go the distance. Wesley Chandler's inside the 10, he's in the end zone. It's a short three, third and about two and a half. Bob's going for it all, the joiner. Seven for the first down swing pass to James Brooks. Foot race with A.J. Dewey. And San Diego's in the end zone again. Fouch. Could be intercepted. And it is. That's Bobby Kemp. Fouch pump fakes. Throws. Touchdown, Kellen Winslow. And the Chargers take back the lead 30 to 24. First down, San Diego. Muncie. Bobble. Is out. He's going to run. Now he throws. There's a man open. James Brooks touchdown San Diego with 59 seconds to play. Are you kidding me? Anderson going to throw. Touchdown, Don Bass. This one might do it, but we've caught that before, haven't we? Ed Luther holds. It is up, and the game is over. The San Diego Chargers win with almost 14 minutes of overtime played. Brooks. In a strike-shortened nine-game 1982 season, San Diego averaged 32 points per contest as Fouts and Chandler tore the league to shreds. Remember, this is with a different set of rules in the early 80s. In terms of per-game averages, Fouts would have passed for more than 5,100 yards while Chandler would have amassed over 2,000 receiving yards in a 16-game season. That's never been done. In 1982, the Chargers scored 91 combined points on the Bengals and 49ers, which were the previous season's Super Bowl contestants. Going deep for Chandler. Touchdown, what a catch! From 1979 to 1982, Fouts was bar none, the most prolific passer in the NFL. No other quarterback came close to his production a 60% completion percentage, more than 16,000 yards through the air, and 104 touchdowns. But most importantly, no QB had more wins. San Diego would hit the road for a wild card game in Pittsburgh. And for the third straight time, Fouts and company would come out on top. 
Third down and seven. Bouts under pressure. Oh, a great screen. The wind's low, and he is going to score. Next up, another divisional game in Miami. Only there was nothing epic about this one. Seven turnovers sent San Diego fishing. Four straight trips to the postseason, four crushing defeats. The Chargers gave the ball away 19 times in those four losses, and in the process, joined the teams that couldn't get over the hump club. Tarkinen's Vikings, Marino's Dolphins, Marty's Browns and Chiefs, Moon's Oilers, the Eagles of the early 2000s, and of course, the Buffalo Bills. Maybe it was the turnovers, the defense, the coaching. Whatever it was, it kept one of the most dynamic teams we've ever seen from winning a Super Bowl. While these Chargers never became a dynasty, their legacy should never be forgotten.